and welcome to this, the ninth reminiscence video from the Living Memory Association. And today we're going to be doing a little bit about technology and we're going to start off with a piece of music. So we've got this lovely old 1920s Regal 78 record. So let's have a listen to that. So we heard there from uh, Tom Kinnisborough singing uh, a lovely Scottish song on that lovely 78 record player, a wind-up Decker, one from before the First World War. Do you remember 78s? They are very old technology now, but you might more remember a 45 or, of course, an LP. These, unlike our 78 records, were vinyl, so you could drop them on the floor and they would shatter. And we have here a lovely 1960s record player that you could actually take out on picnics, or take out outside, uh, and that runs on battery. So, do you remember buying records? Or did you club together to buy a record? We hear a lot of that. Or did your parents or your grandparents have these old 78 records? So that was records. Where did you go to buy your records? Did you have a specific shop you went to? Of course, the other way to listen or to music or to speech were radios. We have a, a nice selection here that we're going to have a little look at. So I have a lovely selection of radios here. I'm going to start with this lovely Columbia wooden radio. And this would have had these valves in it, which you may remember. I certainly remember them in televisions. Uh, and these could be replaced if they went wrong. But do you remember having an old set like this? Was it on your sideboard? And do you remember some of the old stations, Luxembourgers? something but there were lots of uh, different stations a lot of foreign stations you could uh, bring the dial round quite often it took a long time to turn the dial and you'd find all these exotic radio stations so that's probably 1930s 1940s uh, moving on a bit we have this this is a Murphy now radios just like record players became more portable when we got transistors so this one would have been certainly one you would have taken out and about uh, so much so you had your carrying strap and good old-fashioned buttons that make a lovely click noise again Bush very popular radio at the time long wave and medium wave uh, big huge batteries. Do you remember the batteries in radio? Some of them were PP9s, would it be this size? Um, early radios, of course, had the accumulator, which was a battery that needed to be recharged, often in a glass case. And you would often hear children going along to the shop to get the accumulator recharged. And if you think this is a container containing acid, um, political. Uh, health and safety rather, not much in evidence. Um, and I certainly remember getting a radio like this. As I was saying, getting exotic radio stations. This is a short wave band radio. And you could get lots of different stations from all over the world. So that's quite sophisticated. And telephones. Now we're going right back with this daffodil. I think people used to call this style of phones. And you'll see this. If you don't remember them yourself, you'll see this in old films. And of course, it was this delightful way here of uh, separating the receiver and the talking part like that. So I do like that in old films. Um, lovely, heavy old telephone. This, I think, is probably 1950s, a very early one. 
uh, Bakelite style. Now, I think certainly children will not be familiar with this lovely sound which I associate with phoning, which is this if we have a listen. And a lovely one on this too. That's an even more, very, very clockwork, as we always say about these old machines and technology, it's all about clockwork on this lovely big heavy receiver which you could tuck under your shoulder there and actually be hands free as they now say. And I do particularly like this here, this is a, a little box you put on your telephone table because of course we're all conscious of costs and it actually says telephone, watch your call and you put your money in here if you're using somebody else's phone. And of course, we used to have the telephone directories and the yellow pages was the other one. You remember that? This is a lovely Edinburgh phone directory from 1915. And look how thin that is, because of course not many people had phones. Do you remember getting your first phone? Do you remember being on a party line, which was quite, quite the thing to be on? And people had to wait for their phone to be put in. And of course it was all controlled by the GPO. And do you remember having a lock on your dial so that uh, children often couldn't dial the phone? Televisions, of course, this is another thing that people remember getting their first television. This is around 1951, lovely, lovely cabinet, tiny screen. Now, if you think of, if you have a computer or a laptop, the screen of your laptop will be just about that size. This was bought and actually the coronation of Queen Elizabeth was watched on this television. A lot of people remember their first view of the television was actually for the coronation. We spoke again again about these valves. That is a whole lot of valves in the back of that. And I certainly remember back in the 60s, we always had old televisions. And my father, certainly the picture would go wrong. And my father would, keeping the television on, open the back of the television up and gingerly move these valves and see which one was the problem and then try and replace them. The other thing which you continuously had to do was adjust the aerial and this was a, a great uh, fun thing almost to do except it wasn't because it was rather annoying. Yes, the picture's better, you'd shout. Yes, it's better. No, it's worse and this would go on for a long time. So this is 1950s and then in the 70s we've got more portable televisions. This is still a black and white one. This is a Sony one. But do you remember getting your first television? Do you remember getting your first colour television, which came in in 1967? And of course, there was photography and filmmaking. Now we've got lovely, this is a box brownie style camera. In fact, it is a pocket brownie. And you'd have to look through a tiny little window here, frame up your picture and then take it. And these would take 12 exposures and film was not cheap. So you had to be very careful of what you would take on your spool. You might take it along to the chemist to get it developed. Do you remember doing that? Did you have your own camera? Well, they were an expensive item, so not everybody had one. It's a very basic one. This is a, a little more complex. This is another brownie window here and of course we have at the Living Memory Association uh, an archive of excellent photos taken on such cameras as that. Of course the other thing if you really had money was Cinefilm and this is a lovely Bell and Howe camera and I particularly remember and love the sound of Cinefilm in the projector that sort of as it goes round which is very, very evocative. So did you have a camera or did you borrow a camera? And did you take a camera on holiday and get lots of holiday snaps? 
And we should remember that these technologies here, which now seem to us very old fashioned, were in fact once cutting edge technology. And we should also remember, because of the advance of technology, that all these things here, listening to music, looking at the television, taking videos and film, using the phone, all can be done on one device, our mobile phone. So that's how things have sped on. I hope you've enjoyed this ninth reminiscence video from the Living Memory Association. And please do remember to, when we're open again, to come along and visit us at Ocean Terminal Shopping Centre and the Wee Museum of Memory. We're on the second floor next to Britannia. And if you have your own memories, and you want to share them with us, please contact us via www.livingmemory.org.uk. Thank you.